Hi, I'm Dr. Israel Barkin, the Medical Director of the Prostate Cancer Research and Education Foundation. And as part of the Ask Dr. Barkin call-in show, we review a certain abstract. The abstract I'll discuss now. And the article is about the risk of death from prostate cancer after radical prostatectomy or brachytherapy in men with low or intermediate risk disease. This was published in the Journal of Urology. We have here researchers from uh, Harvard and from Duke University. And this is the abstract that uh, I'm going to go over and perhaps bring some interesting points brought up in the article itself. So radical prostatectomy uh, is widely used as treatment for favorable risk prostate cancer. In this study, they estimated the risk of prostate cancer-specific mortality following radical prostatectomy or brachytherapy in men with low, but also with intermediate risk prostate cancer using prospectively collected data. Materials and methods. The study was comprised of 5,760 men with low risk the low risk was defined as PSA below 10, clinical stage T1C, or less, or listen score of 6 or less, and 3,079 patients with intermediate risk that had PSA between 10 and 20, clinical stage T2B or T2C, and GLISEN score of 7. They also discuss in the article competing risk on multivariable regression and to assess the risk of prostate cancer specific mortality after radical prostatectomy or brachytherapy. It was adjusted for age, year of treatment, cardiovascular comorbidity, and non prostate cancer prognostic factors. So here are the results. The median follow up for the low risk was only 4.2 years, which obviously it is not long enough time to make conclusion for patients who are interested in more than 4.2 years, especially young men with prostate cancer. And the median follow-up for the intermediate risk group was 4.8 years, which also is quite short. The conclusion of the article is there was no significant difference in the risk of prostate cancer specific mortality among low risk, although the p-value was 0.35, or intermediate risk, the p-value was 0.07, treated with brachytherapy compared to radical prostatectomy. So we see we have some problem with the p-values that actually make it not completely uh, uh, statistically significant. But anyway, that conclusion of this article is the risk of prostate cancer specific mortality in men with low or intermediate risk was not significantly different following radical prostatectomy. Let's go now to certain highlight points from the article. So first of all, they write in their discussion that retrospective series and one small prospective study have demonstrated similar outcomes in biochemical prostate-free survival between radical and external beam radiotherapy and interstitial brachytherapy for men with low-risk disease. And we are quite aware of the fact that when you have low-risk disease, it almost doesn't matter which treatment you do, uh, you, the survival will be good. I think it pans out more when you increase the risk, then one treatment may show to be better than the other, and that's where it's important in the higher risk group of patients. Uh, given the definition of PSA failure, often differ among local treatment modality. For example, the biochemical prostate-free su survival remained an investigational surrogate endpoint, and the prostate cancer-specific mortality is an accepted and definitive clinical endpoint for comparing outcomes of RP or RT. Rapid decrease of PSA to undetectable levels in many men followed after RP compared to slow decrease in PSA following RT and 
it can delay treatment in the patients that are in the group with the radiation therapy. So this makes a bit the comparison uh, difficult. So let's move now to other comments they make here at um, this article. The follow-up and determination of cause of death. At the time of PSA failure, pelvic CT and MRI were obtained at the physician discretion, which creates a bit of a problem here about influencing the survival of the patient. Let's go now to the results. Of the 5,760 5, men with low-risk prostate cancer, 33% were treated with the RP and 67% were treated with the BT, so we don't have equal size of groups here. The low-risk men who underwent RP were significantly more likely to be younger, to have non-palpable disease, to have a Gleason score 5, it was higher in the patient that underwent radical prostatectomy, and they also tended to have a lower PSA. So we see that the groups were not really matched in an ideal way. Predictor of prostate cancer specific mortality. For men with low risk, median follow-up was 6.1 years. For the RP and 3.6 for the brachytherapy. So you see a big difference here between the follow-up for the low-risk patients between this, these two treatments. And this, this creates a bit of a problem because it's not equal follow-up between the treatments in the patient with low risk, and that's also true. Those that were treated with BT had significantly shorter median follow-up also in the intermediate group. So the estimates of prostate cancer specific mortality. Overall, there were 17 deaths from the PC among 5,760 patients. It was a 0.3% in the low risk and 27 deaths from PC among the 3,079 that had intermediate risk. And they write specifically in the unadjusted analysis, men with low risk and intermediate risk treated with RP or brachytherapy, the RP had longer time to prostate cancer specific mortality compared to those with BT. That means the length of time to die was longer in the group that had radical than the group that had uh, radiation therapy, the brachytherapy. So uh, to conclude, there are several points here that make the comparison even more difficult because the difference in length of time till the patient becomes biochemical uh, recurrence in the, between surgery or radiation because the difference in the criteria how you define re recurrence. Also it's important to know that there were other treatments given to people besides the surgery and the brachytherapy and they write in this article that actually the group that got radical prostatectomy had an advantage because they had better staging after the radical prostatectomy to enable this patient in that group to get an adjuvant hormonal blockade or radiation at an earlier phase. So they admit that there are certain advantages for the RP group. So when you are a young man reading this article, and you see that the survival was about the same, but the point that the people doing brachytherapy say, well, we could have gotten better survival if we would know exactly about the staging in a timely manner, like the group that had surgery, then you ask yourself, when you are a newcomer, whether it doesn't make sense to undergo the radical prostatectomy because of the advantage of having this information of staging and more accurate grading of the tumor at the time of radical prostatectomy. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions about this article or other question, please dial 1-877-727-3301 and post your question. If you would like to get an abstract of this article, please write to info 
at pcref.org. Thank you. Hope to hear from you. Goodbye.